Now, next speaker is Ashley Mackay. Ashley, and I'd like to mention his wife, Doris, also, are beef producers in Aug from Augustella. Ashley said they run a cow and calf operation. They've always been interested in projects that give benefit to the smaller and larger sections of their community, and they've always demonstrated a great passion for whatever they are involved in. Ashley was attracted to the Cattlemen's Union and served seven years on the council, including three years as vice president. He was also served on the Livestock and Meat Industry Council of Queensland. He perceives there are problems in the cattle industry, but strongly believes they can be fixed. I might add that Ashley was foundation president of the most successful grassroots organisation that exists in Australia today, the Australian Camp Draft Association, and the vision they showed nearly 40 years ago, Ashley, ago to draw up something like that. We just recently reviewed the constitution and it still serves us so well. And it's people with vision like that but we need to look into the industry we have today. Uh, Ashley, welcome to the stage. Well, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, everyone, for coming along here today and making the effort. And uh, when Graham rang up about a month ago and said to me, listen, uh, we're going to have a meeting and a forum. Would you like to give us a hand? I sort of thought, well, bugger this. I said I was going to retire from this sort of thing years ago. But anyway, my curiosity and my mongrelness got the better of me, and here I am again today. So look, my first job here this afternoon is to, I've been asked to summarise what all the people said and what we've listened to today. I think the summary is actually pretty clear and anyone who has thought about it would have to come to the same conclusion that I have. And it's been a summary on a tale of failure. It's been failure from our politicians and it's been failure from our industry organisations. That's been a common thread which has gone through the whole day. They've let things happen. And the message for us to fix it, of course, has been no one else is going to fix it. We've got to drive this bus, we've got to drive the politicians, and we've got to drive the media to help do it. But if we just take them as they came, Julian Cribb gave a very interesting address this morning. And it's interesting that Julian went back to the 1976 cattle crisis because that's about when I first became involved in agri-politics. And he painted a very, very hard picture of the future for food. Now, I was pleased Julian brought this up because I had the same blue with a man from the Premier's Department in Charleville back in 1997 about we are losing land to environmental concerns and other things, and yet our food production is declining. And I'm very pleased Julian agreed with me on that one. We're losing more than 1% of our land every year because we're taking land out of production. And he didn't mention the fact of the environmental concerns in the state of Queensland, we've just lost 1.3 million hectares of regrowth to the environmental movement. That's a fair whack to come out of 176 million hectare of state. The 100, ex 100 million tonnes of extra protein, or as he said, two North Americas of production, is a pretty frightening scenario of what we have to produce in the next 40 years. And it is going to take a hell of a lot of uh, innovation, it's going to take a hell of a lot of work to do it. But I wonder whether the world actually has the will to do it and whether there's going to be world wars fought before we ever get there. Because changing the politicians to do something like that this early in the piece seems to me an ins uh, a monumental task. I thought Julian's uh, address was a mix of very, very good facts. He had some bad scenarios. And I also thought that he's got a talent and he's outside the square that most of us look at but it's, he had a bit of a wish list there of where he wanted the world to go. And so far, human behaviour and changing that human behaviour, the world has not been able to achieve that yet by peaceful means. So I just wonder whether we're ever going to get there. It's pretty idealistic. Some of the things about climate change, obviously, is predicated on the Hadley Centre in England, which has been very, very badly discredited and which there is now just as much evidence that the climate change scare is not on at all as opposed to the IPC who says it is on. So the jury's out on that and I wouldn't be all that terribly bad about it. However, what one thing he is right on is the ecological overload. Where on earth do we find all this land because the fisheries are buggered 
to produce all the food that we want when the Greenies keep locking it up. And I made a point at the PRA conference the other day saying, it's amazing, the basic essentials of life are water, food, shelter, energy and transport. Without those five things the world cannot survive. And yet, they are the five things that the green sympathisers and the governments legislate against every day, the essentials of life, and that's crazy. The address of Bill Heffernan, and Bill, you're probably gone by now, to see someone in your position to refer to things as bullshit and all the rest was pretty refreshing to us because we're sick of hearing people talk like Kevin Rudd, talk around in circles and say nothing, mean nothing, and no bugger understands you when you're finished. And that was very, very refreshing. And I thought, what about cattle council? They said, this guy is destructive. I must be on a wrong planet somewhere because I thought that guy was great. He understood our problems and I congratulate him for it. And his idea about frightening Canberra by going taking a tucker strike down there has a fair bit of merit. David Scarlotti, he highlighted the problems of the small people. The payroll tax and the aqueous charges. Now they hammer the hell out of us. And what David didn't say is that in the other countries in the world, particularly in the US which is our major competitor, they regard meat inspection charges as a function of food safety and the food security system in the United States and they pay for it. We're here in Australia, we don't. And it's something that other speakers brought up. Justin Stevano, a great young feedlotter from Roma, and you heard two of the things he had to say. The feedlots are going to be restricted in this country by denial to the sub-artesian water basin. Now th that is something that has been covered in part by the resolution that was moved here today that governments now should address all the economic issues when they're addressing environmental issues. And a lot of you people may know, a lot of you may not know, that under the Federal Act at the present time, the only consideration the Federal Environment Minister must take into account is the environmental effect. He is not allowed to consider an economic effect, the cost of implementation of that policy or the destruction of a region or an industry. They are not allowed and that is hence the, re the, re the uh, resolution here today. The other thing which is very disturbing about Justin's report was the variation between what is supposed to be a standard Osmeet trim between works. Now maybe there's an explanation for that, but at first instance it appears there's some work to be done to get what we all think is the standard trim actually made standard. It, do, it appears its interpretation and its implementation is different in different works. Brad Bellinger, Brad that was a wonderful presentation you had today with uh, particularly with your graphs and your information. And if anyone was ever in any doubt about how our promotion has failed and how we and why we must change and how the prices are overseas compared to the prices here, if anyone still has any doubts and harbours the fact that we've done a great job with our MLA promotion, then I think we're in Disneyland. If anyone ever needed concrete evidence, Brad provided that today. So David Bayard, well, David, I had trouble keeping up with you. Because you're the fastest talking guy I've ever heard present. And he gave us more information in five minutes than most give us in an hour. I liked your comment about the seagull. I'm not sure which senator you were talking about. I don't know if it was Erica Betts, your own boy, or who it was. But I went down to Tasmania there once and I saw all those blokes and uh, there's a few seagulls in Tasmania too. The one thing about David's address that was 100% spot on and was very disconcerting when it happened, it was disconcerting to me, was the total ineffectiveness of the ACCC to understand the problems of the beef industry and the competition there. And David, you did a good job of pointing that out because that was a shocking job. It was uh, something of incompetent people bumbling over things they did not understand. Devon Johnson, well, 
Vaughan said something that we all understand. There was $1,000 for Bullock 8 in 1989. We're still getting the same today. But the one thing which stuck out was the 1,000 K wagons on the rail back 10 years ago. And today it's down to 500. And we wonder why the roads are falling apart. And can anyone understand how the rail now will not load out of Dolby? To go to the meatworks down there at, uh, in South East Queensland, they've got to put them on the trucks. But the railway line runs right past the Dolby sale yards. If you want something else stupid about the railway, at the present time, if you buy grain out of Dolby, that's manufactured grain, it is trucked back to Toowoomba and then railed from Toowoomba west to Charleville. Only a bureaucrat could come up with that. The Barnaby Joyce, well, Barnaby is Barnaby. And like Bill Hefnam, he tells us things as they see it and makes sense. The diversion of 30% of the water out of the River Murray, also you must understand is 30% less water for food production in Australia, which is something that makes you scratch your head. I welcome his assertion that they will reinstate asset security. That has been something that's been missing for a long time. The other thing about that is that he was saying we must tell him how we're going to do things. And that's why I brought it to his attention that the Senate had already held an inquiry into Meat and Livestock Australia before. And so it's been sitting on the desk there for a long time and to their misfortune and discredit, the coalition government did nothing about that. They just sat on their hands. And that is something that we have to push for what is a better word, our own side of politics a lot more because they can be just as dismissive, they can be just as ignorant of our problems as anyone else as they chase city votes. And we do have to push that. I'm pleased that Barnaby found the Sherman Act to fight monopolies because that's something that I'm going to bring up later to be incorporated into any new movements in the MLA and also as of today. To John McNamee and also his stuff on the banks, I'm sure a few of us would love to get 0.8% interest rates. What a hell of a thing that would be. And to pay 4% 4, 4 as the Yanks do would be great. And finally to Lee, Lee that was, you and Brad actually did tremendously well here today. You put the facts out there, you spelled it out in ways that most of us could understand and it was very illuminating and more than that, it actually set the scene and confirmed beyond any doubt that no matter what you may think of MLA, no matter what you may think of our peak councils, we're not going to say the people are mongrels, but we are going to say the policies and the structure has failed. That must be the conclusion we have drawn. I like the way she paid tribute to Brad and John Carter for saving our day on the BSE imports when everyone else went to water. And I also have to say, you'd have to thank Bill Heffern a fair bit for that too because he was one who got involved with that one. And I love the politi political correctness out of the door because I never got in that door in my life. So uh, I felt pretty comfortable about that one. So that's about the summary of the day. We've got a few more resolutions to go. The one thing that has really terrified me today is the question on the issue of environmental integrity that's being promoted by no less than our own MLA and Red Meat Advisory Council. Now what is environmental integrity? Is environmental integrity going back to natives? I went down to address a meeting in Tasmania a couple of years ago and they were hooked on replanting native species. It was native species legislation. When I actually spoke there and said, can anyone in this audience tell me the native species that grew in Tasmania that fed people, I got blank looks. Nothing that feeds the people in Tasmania is a native species. Yet the government, aided by the feds,